In this video, I will be teaching you how to draw the graphs of trigonometric functions. I'd just like to mention that I will not be teaching you how to draw the graph of, say, a times sine bx plus c. I'll be going over this in my next video, and here I'll just be going over the basic properties and some of the values on these graphs. So over here, we have the graph of y is equal to sine x. So this is the first graph that we will be looking at. And let's start out by looking at what the different points on this graph are. So this value over here is zero or origin. Over here, our graph goes up to one, which is the maximum value of y is equal to sine of x. And that's obviously because sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And the opposite will never be bigger than the hypotenuse. So sine of x cannot be greater than one. And the minimum over here is negative one. Now, this value, which is our maximum point, or where y is equal to 1, is 90. So this is 90 degrees. And then you can guess by the way the graph is shaped that this here is 180 degrees, this here is 270 degrees, this is 360 degrees, this is 360 plus 90, which is 450 degrees, and then this will be 540 degrees. Another property that we can look at is what the period of this graph is. So what is the period of the graph? Well, the period of the graph refers to how long it takes for this graph to repeat itself. So as, you've can pro as you probably noticed, this is like a repeating wave type thing. So for example, if we were to go on, our graph would just keep on going up and down in the same fashion with the same ratio. So say from here to here, it's 180 degrees. So from here to here to be 180 degrees, here to here would be 180, here to here would be 180, and so on. Now the period of this graph is 360 degrees. And that's because for the graph to repeat itself, you have to go over this whole entire area of 360 degrees, then you're back at zero, and the graph just does the same thing again. So it goes up, and then down, and that's another 360 degrees. So this here is 720 degrees, and so on. And even on the negative side, it'll just do the same thing. So it'll go like this, and then you can't really see it, but it'll just repeat the same exact pattern. So the period of this graph is 360 degrees. So it reaches its maximum at 90 degrees, and then again at 450 degrees, and then again 360 degrees after that. So yeah, that's all you need to know about sine graphs. Now let's look at the graph of y is equal to cosine of x. And right off the bat, you probably notice that it's very similar to our graph of y is equal to sine of x it's just shifted a bit. So for example, while this peak is at 90 degrees, this peak over here is at zero degrees instead. So this obviously is zero. This over here is 90 degrees, so the first zero point. This here is 180 degrees. This here is 270 degrees. And this over here is 360 degrees. So the maximum point once again is 1. The minimum point, so this point over here, is negative 1. And once again that's because cosine is equal to a over h and a cannot be greater than h so our fraction or our value of cosine cannot be greater than 1. So what is the period of our graph of cosine of x? Well, the amount of time it takes for it to, or the amount of distance it takes for it to repeat itself is once again 360 degrees. So it starts up here, goes down, comes back here, that's 360 degrees, that's one loop. Then if you wanna go 360 more degrees, it does the same exact thing over here. So like, this kind of, and then it'll go on, just continue. Over here also, 
our graph will just continue itself and go on to continue to do the same exact thing. So the graph of cosine and sine are both very similar. The only difference is that cosine starts from zero and, or sine starts from zero, I'm sorry, and cosine starts over here from one. And the period is 360 degrees. Now let's look at the graph of y is equal to tan of x. So this graph is very different from the other two. Um, over here, there isn't really a maximum or minimum point. So whereas in sine and cosine, it couldn't go over one, over here, our value can go infinitely high. So we start over here at zero, and this just keeps on going up and up and up. And over here, we have something called an asymptote, and you don't really need to remember the name asymptote, but what you should remember is that this right here is 90 degrees, and these two lines will never intersect. So you cannot have 10 of 90. So this is undefined. And this over here is 180 degrees. This here is to 70 degrees. And this here is 360 degrees. And likewise, you were to bring this dotted line down, our graph will never intersect with this. So over here as well, 270 degrees, we have another asymptote. So the graph of tan of x will never intersect with 270 degrees. So tan of 270 is also undefined. One important point that you should remember on this graph is right here. So if this is 45 degrees, then this value over here is 1. So tan of 45 is 1. And the same goes for every 45 degree increment. So for example, right here, if you take 90 plus 45 gives us 135 degrees. This right here is negative 1. And I don't know why this isn't going down. Over here, this value should also be negative one, and this is 270 plus 45, which is 315. Yeah, 315 degrees. And then this here, 360 plus 45 is one, and you get the idea. Now, what is the period of the graph of tan of x? So what is our period. How often does this graph repeat itself? Well, in the other two cases, it was 360 degrees, but over here, it's not the same. Over here, our period is 180 degrees. And that's because you'll notice that after every 180 degrees, it does the same exact thing. So say, for example, from here to here, say it does this squiggly line thingy, and then from here to here, it repeats the same thing. So in the next 180 degrees over here as well, over 180 degrees has the same squiggly line over here, over 180 degrees, it'll have the same squiggly line and so on. So the points to remember for from tan are at 45 degrees it is equal to one, at 90 degrees it goes up and up and up and it never ends up actually touching this line and the period of our graph is, let me scroll up a bit, 180 degrees.